Coming at you live and direct, this is Film Scoring Lecture Week 1. This week in class, we looked at Max Steiner. Um, we looked at some from King Kong. I've got you giving you clips up on the canvas machine of King Kong and Bird of Paradise. Both of them demonstrating a lot of the characteristics of early Hollywood film scoring. And those characteristics are, number one, coming out of German operatic tradition. A number of early Hollywood composers escaped Vienna and Berlin to come here to practice their craft. Two, wall-to-wall -wall scoring. You notice in Bird of, Paradise, Bird of Paradise, the movie pretty much is not without score. You're always told what to feel. Um, so number three is telegraphing emotion. Exactly like I just said, you were always being told how to feel. Number four, there are clear themes. There's the hero's themes, the lover's themes, the villain's themes, and there's uh, uh, character themes as well as emotion themes, like love themes, sadness themes, suspense themes, but there's clear thematic, melodic material that's indicating what's going on in the movie. Number five, the orchestra covers the sound design. If you skip through Bird of Paradise, um, and about somewhere about the middle of the movie, you will find a scene where the earth cracks in front of the hero of the movie, and that sound design for that earth cracking, volcanic <laughs> cracking, is orchestral, right? The sound design is largely covered by the orchestra. So again, those five things are coming out of German operatic tradition, wall-to-wall -wall scoring, telegraphing emotion, there's a clear theme for characters and emotions, and number five is the, um, the sound design is orchestral. So Max Steiner uh, was born in 1888 in, um, uh, I, be I believe he was born in Vienna. He studied in Vienna with Mahler, in fact. He studied in Vienna with Mahler and, again, was steeped in the German operatic tradition before he came here. When he came here, he proceeded to score King Kong, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, Casablanca, Gone with the Wind in 1939. He started working on also The Wizard of Oz in 1939. If there ever was a year for American film, 1939 is it, early American film. Gone with the Wind and Wizard of Oz, um, both happening at the same time. Um, so, uh, Max Steiner practiced a lot of these early uh, devices in film scoring, and they're evident in these early movies. Um, the, uh, the context of every theme or the context of every scene is being framed by the music. Once film music really got rolling and it started to be accepted by the audience, um, and we didn't have to show the source for the music, right? In some, certain early films, we, the source of the music had to be shown. An orchestra would appear in the picture. They'd be in a nightclub somewhere, or there'd be a shepherd tending his flock, and they'd back off, and there'd be musicians around him supplying the music. In early movies, it was thought that the source of the music had to be shown. Once we got past that, and we accepted music as just part of the atmosphere and ambiance of the movie, um, the early movies really telegraphed the emotion. It's very different now. We have all a whole range of things. We still have big heroic Star Wars type themes, but we also have mysterious sort of under uh, grinding currents of sound. Say for instance in the series Chernobyl or in the new uh, the movie Under the Skin with Scarlett Johansson, there are just elements of sort of grinding sound that melt into and back out of score. Um, and it's a different kind of sonic environment as opposed to having a clear melody play. Um, also, if you look at someone like Stanley Kubrick, they will often play music against the scene. They'll play music against the emotion of the scene. Some kind of joyous Bach music during a grim, violent scene. Or, of course, the most classic, probably the high, the total peak of that is Malcolm McDowell singing, uh, singing in the rain whilst he's kicking his victim in A Clockwork Orange, a kind of whole kind of twist of playing the music against the action to heighten the tension. That's again a newer device and we don't see that as much in earlier Hollywood movies. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that concludes this lecture. We're going to move on to other composers. 
um, and have continuing discussions. Um, but remember these main five points that were listed earlier in the video because those are ideal, would be ideal for final test material. Okay, I look forward to seeing you next week. And this concludes our first week's film scoring lecture.